welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the Extra Mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now, your host, Jackson Mummy, owner of the Celebration Bar Review. Well, hey everybody, welcome to episode 204 of the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. This is your host, Jackson Mummy. I'm glad to have you with us. Welcome. Hope your studies are going well. If you are planning on sitting for the July 2018 bar exam as this episode releases, we'll now be within the 30-day window for that test. So I know that you're working hard and hopefully working productively and uh, really starting to gain some traction as you get closer to the exam. One of the things I can tell you is a lot of people feel like wherever they are at 30 days, they plateau and that there won't be any more improvement. And that's not true. Almost everyone will improve during this last month. The key seems to be for those people that continue to think about constant improvement versus those that are cramming and panicked. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later today. But um, in general, if you're studying for the upcoming exam, there's still plenty of time. And that's uh, the important part of this message because I know you're in a big hurry. If this is your first time on the podcast, we're glad to have you with us. Want to let you know that there are a couple different ways you can get uh, into these podcasts. One is to watch them on video. Go to celebrationbarreview.com forward slash 204 to see today's episode. You'll see the full video. Uh, if you'd like to listen to the podcast, you can do that on Apple iTunes or on iHeartRadio or on Spotify or I think probably almost anywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, we're syndicated in a lot of different places. You can also go back and check out our previous episodes from our podcast uh, archives on our website at celebrationbarreview.com. Just click on the link at the top of the page for podcasts and you'll see all of those. And I'm going to refer you back to a couple of earlier episodes uh, today as we uh, talk a bit. Um, some episodes I think will be relevant and that I would encourage you to check out. So make sure you get an opportunity to do that. I'm really excited about today's episode because we're doing something a little bit different. As you may know, back in the beginning of June, we did, I'm thinking, trying to think back, it now seems so long ago, uh, we did a live boot camp experience here in Celebration, Florida for our registered bar review students. And we did a two-day training in which we talked about using photo reading uh, to study for the bar exam. But as part of that experience, we had a special opportunity to bring back one of our graduating boot camp students who had passed the bar, um, and he shared his experience with the group. Now, that uh, passing member of the Florida Bar was James Botkins. And if that name is familiar to you, it's because we did an interview with James back in episode 195, and I'll link to that in the show notes so you can check it out. It's a terrific interview of his entire story. But really, there was more to James' story than we talked about in that interview. Um, I invited James to come and talk to our boot camp attendees about his particular experience in studying and taking the exam and using some of the tools that we provided. And it was incredibly powerful. Uh, he shared right from the heart and uh, the students that were there uh, were just blown away by his honesty and his uh, care and his wisdom and the things that he had learned along the way. And I thought that that interview was so good that I really wanted to go ahead and make that into a podcast episode today. So while the format's a little bit different, um, I think you'll really enjoy hearing from James. Uh, and if you listen to episode 195, this will just sort of pick up where that left off. If you haven't heard it, it'll stand on its own just fine. But I think you'll want to go back and check out that episode because he's really compelling and his story is so great. So we're going to jump uh, to that interview in just a minute. Now, as always, our podcast is sponsored uh, by the free webinar that we do each week. It's called How to Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. This is a look at the powerful, proven way to pass. And in this free 90-minute webinar, I'll be walking you through the four steps that you have to follow in order to be successful. We'll include lots of case studies of successful students, people like James, uh, for you to be able to get a sense of how these steps work together and how they fit together to give you the ability to take the exam and pass it. It is entirely free, but you do need to register, and you can do that in one of several ways. You can go to our website at celebrationbarreview.com forward slash webinar and register there. If you're watching our video podcast, just scroll down the page and you'll see a link here on this page. 
And if you're listening to the podcast, if you check out the show notes, there's a link in your show notes as well. So we've got a lot of different ways for you to do that. Now, the webinar will be this Thursday, June 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 o'clock Pacific. And that's our live version of the webinar. I'll be on the webinar to answer questions uh, at the end and uh, answer any questions that you've got at all. So we encourage you to join us for the live webinar. If Wednesday, I'm sorry, if Thursday the 28th doesn't work for you, um, we do also offer the same material in an on-demand daily webinar, and you'll see that when you go to register. It's an option right there on the page. Just click the on-demand version. You can watch the same material, the same presentation, uh, and then just email uh, me your questions, and there's a spot right there on the webinar that you can do that, so it's super easy, and I'll be glad to respond to you that way. Either way, you're going to get great information that can help you make the next bar exam your last bar exam. And so we really encourage you to sign up for it. Uh, check it out. I think it'll be a, a game changer for you for sure, as it's been for thousands of people who've been through this webinar over the past few years. So join us on Thursday, the 28th, 7 p.m. Eastern for the live presentation or daily on demand. Now, there's one other episode that I want to just call to your attention. Uh, I said that we're in the 30-day window um, for the exam, and uh, back in episode 152, I did a, an episode specifically about the 30 days to the exam, uh, built around the uh, famous Pixar movie, Wall-E. So if you're a Pixar fan, if you're a Wall-E fan or a robotics fan, or maybe you just want to know a lot about what it's like at 30 days before the exam, which is probably true for most of you, uh, check out episode 152 in our series. I will link to that. I really encourage you to check that out. It's not a long session, uh, but it's a really good one and really powerful. So hope you'll check that out as well. Well, I want to get you into James' story, uh, and I'm going to let him pretty much tell the story of what he did and how he did it. You'll hear him talk about the tools that he used, things like photo reading and paraliminals, and uh, we've got lots of information about those tools. They're things that we recommend for our students, and so I hope you'll check that out. But most of all, I just want you to hear the uh, sincerity that James has about this process and what worked for him in spite of uh, previous failures and difficulties and challenges and what he did to overcome them. It is really, truly inspiring, and I think you're going to love hearing from him. So let's jump into our boot camp discussion with Florida attorney James Botkins. It would not be an interview if I didn't have a cup of coffee <laughs> <laughs> or anything else. Um, this is a this is a real treat, I gotta tell you. This is one of my favorite, favorite students. And last December, in a much smaller room, yeah. in a galaxy far, far away, yes. this guy was wearing a raggedy old t-shirt, had on his headphones. And a beard down here. And a beard, here. yes, he looked like a mountain man. And he was grinding through mind mapping. Correct. And photo reading. Correct. Right. And so I am very pleased to introduce to you a member of the Florida Bar, Counselor James Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, I'm almost going to cry because um, I know exactly what all y'all are going through. I mean, I do. And I didn't pass the first time. I failed. And so I know what it's like. And... Uh, when I got sworn in uh, by the Second District Court of Appeals, I just want to share with you, there was only about 20 people there. The part bat passage rate was only 57, 58%. And you should have seen um, family, friends crying. And it, it was just like that for me. And I just want to share with you, there was a girl sitting next to me, and all she did, we were sitting in the jury box, and all she talked about of that how high she scored on two Florida essays and BS the third one and how this bar review course she used and it it was I've never heard of it before is what made her pass and she was bragging about it and so forth I'll let you on a little secret when I got my results I follow the Florida bar and Florida Supreme Court on Twitter it was eight or nine o'clock I'm driving I pull over I'm in a church parking lot I'm nervous I'm thinking you know what it I, I don't know what to think. And all of a sudden, I saw the word pass. Sitting there with other individuals, the score didn't matter. It meant that if you score this number, that means you pass and you're a bar member. It doesn't make a difference if it's the top score or the, or the lowest score. You're a lawyer. And I'm just sitting there, and the whole time, she just kept sitting there saying it. And I wanted to lean over to her and I go, you're a lawyer. Who cares? You're a lawyer. 
Who cares? Seriously. So, and you know what? I used to be that way fixated on trying to get the highest scores. And that, when you do that, it takes away from your ability to, to, to take in the materials in your non-conscious brain and be able to do the questions and be able to be relaxed. Because you're so worried, if I can get this many in real property, if I can get this many in torts, I'll get over the hump. It doesn't work that way. And I'm, I had, there's no magic wand, I, there's no magic drink, there's nothing. I followed what this guy told me to do and I did it. He said, put your ego to the side, do as I tell you and shut up, just do it. <laughs> Just do it, and that and 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 he, and he cares. And so, if you do that, you will have success. And I sat here and here. You want to laugh? I have twenty of these. I could sell them probably at an art show. I, I mean, this was my very first one. It was Con Law sitting just as you all are right now. Very basic, nothing, you know, crazy. I just did this, and and I did exactly what he said. And so. The only thing that I added was the paraliminals. I would I would listen to the memory charger. I would uh, listen to the um, personal genius. I would do it in the morning. I would read his emails. I can I, I bet none of you all will read his emails when he sends them to you because you dread that I got to read an email and watch a 15 minute video and then I have to read outlines and I have to do questions. Well, let me tell you something. That's what got me through it because there was a message from some somebody on that video that helped me. I'll give you an example. There was four girls who passed this exam, and all of them had the same theme. I put my ego to the side. I did what Jackson told me, and I was successful in the exam, whether it was Florida, California, any bar exam. And that's what motivated me. And then when uh, I don't even know him. Uh, I think it's Andrew DeMasters. Yeah. Okay, I don't even know the gentleman. And do you know what motivated me? When he posted the pictures and he's got his certificate, and guess what? I have mine here to share with you so you can feel the same way. <laughs> Okay, and, the, and, and here, do you want, do you, um, the, the other thing that, that will make you if, you, if I want to give you motivation, look, you even get one of these. Florida Bar Club. Okay, I mean, so, and you don't even have to wait in line at the courthouse. You don't. So, um, but the thing of it is why I share that with you is that those same individuals, I didn't take it like they were being cocky, or I didn't take it as that they were throwing it in my face if they passed the bar exam. I took what they said to help me as the, it helped them to pass. I, that's what I, I, I drove here, it took me almost two hours from Tampa, okay, with traffic. I don't care, but I just wanted to be here to share with you that it works because I know you're sitting here going, I don't know what this stuff is, I don't know this tangerine thing, you know, what's the blip plage, skittering, dipping, all that stuff. You have to, you have to do it every day, and that's what I did. And, I'm telling you the truth, the girl sitting next to me at the floor, when it did the MBE, that's all I took, was the MBE. When I started off and opened that booklet, she almost fell out of her chair. When I sat there and photo read the first pages, I turned it upside down <laughs> and did it again. And I guess what, I looked up at the clock, I only, it only took four minutes. I finished in two hours and 30 minutes. When I walk, was walking out the door, one of the proctors grabbed me and asked me if I was sick. And I said, no, I'm fine. Well, are you giving up? And I said, no. I said, I'm done. And then I just walked out the door and dropped it in the box and did the same thing in the afternoon. Now, I sat in the parking garage at the Florida Convention Center in the morning and I was watching the people. They looked like zombies. They did. They, and I know they had like some fiasco the day before with the exam software. And I'm sorry that, that ha I mean, I can only imagine and all that. But I will tell you that I had my headphones on. I was listening to uh, Personal Genius. I sat there and I photo read both my outlines. And as soon as I looked at my watch and saw that it was time to, to walk in and check in and all that stuff, I did. And then when I got in there, I stayed off into the corner and I stayed away from everybody. All I, and, and when I first got there, all I could hear when I was going up the uh, uh, escalator there, uh, man, that uh, contrast question or con law or whatever it was, they gave, I don't even know what the essays were. They, they kept going on, well, did you get that issue? Did you get that issue? And this and that. And here you are on the second day taking the MBE, and like you, really, you want to talk about the yesterday's exam? But I stayed away from that, and, and I stay off to the side, and I stay calm. I watched people pray. I was watching people stay, you know, that, doing whatever they needed to go in and, and, and be successful in the test. But I got a good night's rest. The first time that I did it in July, I didn't. I was so ex The reason why I didn't sleep was I was afraid I was going to oversleep, and I was excited because I saw my scores increase. So the morning wasn't very good for me because I was exhausted. But the afternoon, I scored a 133 in July in 2017. No, I'm not lying to you. I'll be happy to show you the score sheet. 
and I had to come back and do it again. So those who are sitting here repeating, don't feel bad, okay? Don't get depressed, don't have the dreads, just go, look, you got it. You'll go in there and you'll pass it. That's what I did. And I just listened to what he said and follow, just, there was nothing else. I just used the, two, the booklets, what, or how many are there? I don't know, there's four or five of them. I used those and I just did what Millicent said. I used those little uh, sheets that they'll probably give you tomorrow, I guess. But I would use those and write on those and make notes and, and just stayed within the syllabus and, and did it. I did not do any re extra review questions. I did the substantive assignments, got them done. I did every OPE and the 1991 February exam. And guess what? My score on that was identical to the bar exam. The pa so when he tells you these things, it's for a reason, it's to your benefit. So, but before, if all of y'all have done big box like me, is memorize, flashcards. You gotta know it backwards and forwards um, and do 2,500 questions. Well, I, I, did, I just did that. Kelly even will tell you in the coaching and even on his weekly webinars, the same thing. You don't know how beneficial it is to sit at a webinar on Fridays after you do all this stuff all week and listen to, to Jackson and you all share your, you know, what questions you have. I used to sit there and go, I gotta email him now and ask him a question. This is driving me nuts on this question. Instead, I just sat back and go, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna sit here and do my work and then on Friday, ask a question and then get it from that because then I'm stuck on that question the whole time and it takes away from the studying. So I will tell you, photo reading those two outlines, I did it every day. I, at first when I started, I would do the, just the one subject, say con law, and I'd flip through it and, and put it down, and then do the questions. So by the end, you were actually doing three subjects or four subjects at a time in a book, right? Correct. And how long did it take you to photo read uh, an outline, a subject outline? Just a subject outline was, um, it would take maybe almost seven minutes. Almost seven minutes, yeah. He was a slow photo. <laughs> Almost seven minutes. Now, because you were able, I, I don't want this to go past people, you were reading seven subject outlines every night. How many of you are reading word for word, line for line, seven subject outlines every night? Oh, no one? No. You see, it's impossible to do that, but because you were able to read every night, mm -hmm. you were building a reservoir, you were building a foundation, and then working through it. And in addition to that, then you were mind mapping. Right? Correct, yes. And so you were taking these mind maps, these 20 or so sketch pads, and I think James really came up with something with the bound sketch pad. I loved it as a way to nest a subject. So this was your... This was my con law and evidence. Okay, so con law and evidence are in this, this pad. And so you just showed the first page, but there's a whole bunch of... Them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, help them out there. Show them. What you Whoops. Sorry about that. Sorry on the video. Um, yeah, I just... If I can do it like this. Look at this. And I mean, I, I just you hadn't mind mapped until you came to boot camp. That is correct. Right. Oh. And, and here, just if and you probably will say no to them doing this, but I mind mapped one of his lectures. It was federal jurisdiction, and I even have the date and time when I did it on YouTube. I did. No, I think it's great. I don't think there's any problem with that. I think anything that helps you identify and figure out what's going on works. And. I think that one of the things that James really did well was that he just said, you know, I'm going to put my blinders on. I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do and not get distracted with all the other stuff. And one of the things I loved at boot camp last December, and I'm not kidding when I say he put on his headphones and he was like, you, so, yeah. and he sat in the back of the room and he just, man, I got, I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. And there was no doubt coming out of boot camp that you were going to be successful because you had that ability to just focus and lock in and start creating the mind maps. And frankly, Millicent and I were talking just before you got here, the mind maps that you guys are creating today, and I mean no disrespect, but they absolutely are as good or better than what James was doing deeper in and certainly better than what you did on day one. You're further along. We're not exactly sure why. But um, the reality is that, that virtually everyone in this room is doing mind maps that are really, really powerful. Um, and, and you discovered, as you were studying, that the mind map really tied it all together. I began to, um, as I was getting more to, uh, uh, at the end of the, the, the assignments that you had to complete and getting towards the, the practice exam, um, as when I see on the Facebook group commenting on a question and you're hung up on it, you're going to get that 
issue come back, it comes back in the material the way he's got it laid out. And I never could understand that at the, at the beginning because Kelly would always say, just don't worry about it, read it, it's there, you'll get it. And so in the mind map, what I would do if it was a torts question on negligence or something like, like child nuisance or something, I had it marked in my map that it was to me as like I would put a little tab here and that I would go back to that and I would follow my mind map and as I'm reading the, the explanation and the, and the uh, question answer, I would go back and add to that map and then all of a sudden you started to, to see that, like in, in your mind, like you could see it and then when you would read another question like that, all of a sudden I could visualize in my head like branches, like when I would read a nuisance question. Or, or a child uh, 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 attractive nuisance question. And so it, it, you'll, it's hard to explain because it'll just start. And he, ex he says that in his videos all the time. It will just start happening. And you don't ask why, but it just starts. And that's what happened. And, it, and I will tell you, I was so relaxed going into that exam. And I told Jackson this, you could have stuck me with a knife and I would have never felt it. And I wasn't on any illegal or legal drugs. I just did. Uh, I went in there, I mean, I, I had my energy drink to, or whatnot, but I will just tell you that uh, when I sat there, I just couldn't wait to do it. And even when I finished early, both in the morning and afternoon, I could do another test. That's how I didn't even feel like I could, was tired. Like I couldn't believe that. In the past, I thought somebody took a nail and drove it in my head, and I, was, I kept thinking about it, all these questions. Well, you know that question had this in there and that and blah, blah, blah. I didn't, I didn't even think of a yeah, question. Let's, let's talk a little bit about how you answered MBE questions, because everybody in this room is going to take multiple choice questions, whether it's Florida only or MBE. When you were reading a question on the exam, mm -hmm. as you're reading the question, what's happening in your mind? Um, I'm... When I'm reading it, I'm, I'm honed in on uh, whatever topic there, uh, say, say it's a criminal uh, law question on murder. I'm, I know, okay, I'm in, I'm in the murder realm, but I keep reading, and then I go right to the, to, I go down and I read all four answers, and immediately I pick the answer, whether it was you know, murder or so, not murder. So just to be clear, you didn't eliminate wrong answer choices, no. you didn't analyze, you didn't memorize, you weren't going through the elements, you weren't doing mnemonics, you weren't singing songs to yourself. No. Right? You weren't, uh, you know, rolling dice. Uh, you know, you were just, you knew that you knew it, right? Correct. Correct. And I, and I would answer it and move on. I will tell you that on, on the bar, I know I guessed on probably, in, I'm thinking seven. It could have been more. I just, I'd read it, read it and, I'd, and I'd go through them. I didn't have any instinct of saying A, B, or C, or D. I'd read it one more time, and then all of a sudden, that's it. I'm done. And then I just went into the next question. I didn't even think about that. And uh, Jackson it gave great advice uh, about you don't strong arm this test. You will lose. And I think, and so that's the, 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 the mindset I took while preparing for it. I kept saying to myself, don't fight it. Don't fight the questions. Don't get down if you miss one. So what? Okay. I will tell you, I was, I was telling, um, how do you, Mila, I was, we were talking and I, I remember her from boot camp. And I said, I know how you feel. I know what it was like to sit here and you go online and you see in well, Florida, you see fail and that's it. And you just beat yourself up and you're like, man, I spent this time, this money, all this. And for what? Maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I shouldn't do this. But then you just, you pick yourself back up and you're like, look, I can do this. It, you, you can. And that's what I said to myself. And so, um, so if, when I was here in December, um, he did a poll and there was people saying how high they scored. I can tell you I was embarrassed to say that I only got three right, okay? But I sat back and said, I'm going to use this methodology and his techniques and I know it will get better. And it did. I mean, it honestly, it did. In my scores, I will tell you, do not sit here and cheat yourself on phonying up your practice exams, okay? <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. It's, I'm going to let you know a little secret. Something's free. You can go to a public library and reserve a room and conduct as if you were at the, sitting in your testing center. I did that in Tampa off of Barris Avenue. I would call or I would go there and they had a quiet study and they had tables just like this. And I would go in there and say, all right, I got my watch, no water, no food, no backpack, no nothing and take it in there and, and take it as if it's, it's a setting. And I could just kept track of my time when I was done. If you do that, regardless of what you score, at least you're honest with yourself. And then it shows that what you need to work on and, and re-hone on it. And if you're really good at something, you're okay, just move on. 
And that's the way I did it. So that, that's what helped me. And, and I was consistent with my time because of photo reading. I will tell you this, the time that I took the bar without photo reading, I was there until with five seconds to go and I was in a panic and I was like just bubbling at the end. This time I wasn't. I left 30 minutes early both times and that's the truth. And the irony of it was is Jackson said, well, when do the results come out? And I go, I have no idea because I'm not sitting in there when they go, we got 2,500 people taking the exam today. You'd already left. I'd already left. So that's the way you should feel when you walk out of that test. And I didn't see it. I know y'all sitting here, you don't believe in this. You think it's hogwash or something. It's not. It's, he's telling the truth. And it, was, it hit me that way when I was like, I did exactly what the, he told me to do, and it worked. He even sent me an email saying to sign up for this camp, and I didn't even sign up for it because I knew I passed. That's how confident I knew I did. And, and so you have to, you, if, you, if you do the techniques and what they're saying there, it, it'll work. It, I mean, it, it will. Um, it's an incredible story, and it's great. I mean, it's, I, I know everybody here is just like, you know, how cool is that? And then we did the interview uh, mm -hmm. for the, the course. And you had visualized that interview before we did it, right? That and visualizing. I had a dream Monday night. And, and I'm not making I swear yeah, my grandfather's grave. Place, right? Yeah. Um, I swear my grandfather's grave. Monday evening, because he, he had sent an email talking about back off and you're fine. Don't do any more and just fo photo read. And that's what I did. I didn't do any more questions. I actually just skimmed a couple of my mind maps. Uh, to be honest with you, it was federal jurisdiction because I was a little nervous on that one. Uh, because uh, the way they, how that is. And so, uh, so I, I, that morning I woke, or I, my dream was this. There was a, um, uh, two women um, at a table and at the convention center was a, a flat TV behind them. And I had walked up and there was a banker's box and I dropped my booklet in it and handed them the Scantron. And when I, they put the Scantron in, my NBC or E number pops up and then it says the word pass in big white letters. And out of nowhere, uh, the Florida bar comes around and they're staying there and, they're, and there's other individuals who had just passed too. And they're swearing us in as we're just standing in the convention center. And so uh, I had that, that dream. So the outfits those two individuals were wearing were the same colors when I left that morning. Meaning when I walked out, the two women that were taking the books were wearing the same, same color dresses that I dreamt of. Now, did they, I don't remember their hair color, nothing like that, but I remember the dresses. And so when I dropped it in the box, if you want to laugh, there was a TV behind them. But all it said was, was welcome to Tampa Convention Center. <laughs> okay, so, but I'm just saying oh, to you wow. is, is, that, is the, that that's what I did. And, and every night I always listened to the uh, uh, memory charger or supercharger every night. I know, I know this is how you all part feel. I have to listen to this for 15, 20 minutes. Actually, it's mo most helpful. And how it worked for me is that I see all of y'all posting that I'm going to the gym, I'm eating right, and all that. That's, that's great. But take it in this regard, when you, if you, whenever you study, whether morning, afternoon, evening, if you do the, the um, uh, supercharger before you, before you start your studies and get yourself in that, in that moment, and then you photo read the outlines, and then you do the practice questions, when you're done with it in the allocated time, put it away and realize that while you're eating or you go to the gym, you're activating it. Don't think about it. It's activating. That's what I started to keep telling myself. And then at night, I, I would listen to the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the one at night to go to sleep, Personal Genius, and I would sit there and listen to those words over and over and over. And you'd be amazed how I would start hearing other things I didn't hear before in the, in the audio. And then I would sit there and then... I, you know, I'd fall asleep half the time with it on, and I'd wake up in the middle of the night and have headphones on and so forth. But what happens is in the morning when you wake up, your mind feels such at ease, like you don't dread studying. You don't, and then when you do the supercharger, it almost gives you like a pep, and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready. What, what am I going to do here today? And, and I just did the syllabus. I didn't go off the charts. He did the video just like, he, like if you all have to retake it, I sent my scores immediately. Guess what my first topic was to work on? Real property. <laughs> but I turned around and I did it and I did it with the 2.5 um, speed and just did that and, and that's the way I did it. And I just stayed, I just, I didn't do it. There was no magic wand. There was nothing. I just did what he said and all of a sudden you start to feel it and it, and it, just, it just starts to happen. And don't question it because when you start questioning it, then you'll, you'll, you'll mess up the, the mojo. Yeah, that's the process we were talking about earlier today. 
you start to get over your tips of your skis, you start panicking. It's the bank robbery mode, and that's where you get into trouble. So um, I imagine people have some questions. So why don't we open the floor and let, let folks ask some questions? I would just read the, read the question. I, I'll, I'll give you an example. The big box bar reviews used to do this. They used to say, re, uh, identify what type of question it is. You know, is it a torts question? Is it evidence question? This and that. I didn't do any of that. He just says, read the question. And when you read it, your non-conscious brain is going to, you're going to, um, you just, you're going to know. Like when you, when you get it, you're, because you're, it, it's a distraction to try to strong arm it. That's what I said to myself. So I'm not going to arm wrestle this question. I'll just read it and then read the call and then read the four answers, and then I would go, it's that one, yeah. and that's it, and move on. Yeah. Just, I read the question carefully, and I just read the, uh, and the answers carefully, and that was it, and what I'm, when I say the gut instinct, if, if, I, if it was a criminal, I'll give you an example, if it was a criminal law question, and the question was, could so-and-so be guilty of murder, and, and, uh, or what degree of murder, say, I would just sit there, and if I knew that it was first-degree murder, that's, that's what it was. It was, I didn't try to go, you know, I, I just relied on the facts. I didn't make up facts in my head. I just, whatever the facts told me, that's what I relied upon and that was it. I didn't, I didn't go outside the box. Yeah. You don't have to rush through the questions. One of the things James said, and he, just to make sure everybody got it, he photo read the whole hundred questions first, okay, just to put it in his brain. Then he went through and did the questions in order. He didn't jump around. He went one, through yeah. 100, and we went through each question. Now tomorrow, we're gonna to do something called the 90 second exercise. I'm literally going to have you answering multi-state questions, reading them and answering them in 90 seconds, okay? You may not believe you can do that today. Tomorrow, you will see that you can do it, and you'll see that you can get a lot of them right, okay? So that, great question. The point was is that after photo boot camp in December, uh, which was just seven months ago, is that I, when Jackson would send the emails and, and say photo read and do your practice questions, is that um, I started sitting, sitting there getting more comfortable with the photo reading. Like it would be amazing I could sit there and I could just, it was like, like turning the pages just was very fluid. But it was very difficult at first because you're sitting there and you're looking for the blip and you're doing all that stuff, right? So what I did is I just sat there and, and I can't recall what he gave me to prop up my book, but I, I used that at the dining table, and so I'd do that. So for it to just to start to click is what I saw as it took, um, it was a little bit right before uh, Christmas, it, it, I started to get into just, it was a, it was a flow and routine. And then, then all of a sudden, I started seeing my improvement as I kept doing, you know, kept doing the blocks of, of the questions. And then mind mapping them a, as well. Because that, that's what helped, like, because there were some that I kept missing the same uh, you know, say if it was, say if it was the marital uh, privilege or spousal privilege or something, and you kept missing it or whatever, in those questions you'd sit there and just beat your head up and go, oh, I can't believe I did that. And then all of a sudden when I was mind mapping it, then all of a sudden I mind map it, I go, okay, criminal, civil, uh, who's testifying on the stand? Then all of a sudden it just starts to go, it, it, it will connect. The puzzle pieces start to fit together, don't Correct. they? Correct. Yeah. And I think the other thing James is saying that's really important is that he was consistent. He was doing this work consistently. You're going to come out of here tomorrow night on a high, and then the world's going to jump up and you know bite you in the butt, and you're going to say, "Oh man, you know it's only six weeks or six plus weeks to the bar exam, and my spouse is giving me a hard time, and the kids are home from school, and you know I got to do this, and the world's crazy, and you know there's all those things happening." Listen, you've got for those of you taking the bar exam in July, you've got six or seven weeks where you just keep your head down and keep your focus. It's a little tougher for those of you taking the exam in February or July of 2019 because there's more time for distractions, but you can still work consistently, okay? But it is the consistency, I think, that makes the difference. And I think, you know, James isn't telling you all of his backstory. You can get on our, our video interview and he'll give you the whole backstory. But he had a lot of distractions, and that's, I don't mean to minimize them. They were big deals going on in his personal life uh, at the beginning that were huge barriers to being able to focus on the study. And so this time around, you just got locked in like a laser beam. I mean, and those of you who are here know it. It was like, ooh, that guy, I think it was the beard. The beard, I think it was. And uh, it was like, this guy is going to do it. He is going to make it happen. And I see that same look in, in a lot of faces here today. So I know that it is something that just people just kind of lock in and go, oh, I can do that. Absolutely. I, I did. I, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, that... 
when I did it on my own, I didn't quite understand photo reading. I thought it was like uh, uh, photo memory, okay? So I, I, I did on my own, but I did not photo read those outlines all the time. I, I, I was doing it in the four hours that he allocated, you know, read line by line and all that. And when I came to the boot camp and he implemented about mind mapping, all of a sudden I was like, wow, this, this is gonna save, save me time. And so it did help in versus doing it on my own. Um, and because I got to see it implemented and, and, and understand the process because I was stuck with the ego of, I don't get this photo reading. I don't know what it's doing for me. I need to go with my old way because this is what's been, this is what I think is successful. But guess what? It, it never was successful for me because I wouldn't be here today if, you know, using this methodology. So yes, absolutely. The, the boot camp was the, the thing because I will tell you that before in December, I was journaling my wrong answers. Um, and uh, I was uh, not completely photo reading um, uh, the topics and, and I was listening to the lectures again at regular speed. But as soon as we had the boot camp, he said, go to fast speed, do the photo reading every day and so forth. All of a sudden that really kicked in because I was, I was actually, you'll laugh, I was sitting just like you all in December. I had, uh, I had just, I had, I was in con law. I, I did 60 through hundred. I think it was on Sunday. I finished those questions and then I was starting right into evidence and I only had, I think two more topics left because I was trying to stay on path because of February's exam to be able to have uh, the time in case I also had to do the review questions, which I didn't have to do any of those. So yes, absolutely. With whatever his syllabus said. Yeah, I, now I will be very honest. Yes, when you, I will be very honest with you is that when I first did the mind map, because I, I think we're all like this from law school, is that we are detailed. And so I started off and I was, I was spending a little bit more time on this. And what I realized is that um, relying on Kelly is that don't get too crazy with the mind map because you're, you're going to, the materials will reinforce that whatever you got right or got wrong. And so then that's when I start realizing. So I'd, I'd keep the, my, uh, I, as I labeled them with, with a marker and I would just lay them on the floor. And then if I got to whatever, if it was evidence, I'd pick it up and go right to the evidence one and then add to the, to that. But I, I found that if you, if you stay within the time frames that he tells you, you'll see more benefits than you do if you do it longer because that's when I was doing it like going longer than the three or four hours or six hours and trying to do seven or eight then I didn't see any uh I wasn't getting better I was it was almost like I started falling going the other way yeah I think that's really I think that's really true um well when I, when the when I did the, the photo boot camp like you, that you all are doing today is I did just the one subject pursuant to the syllabus but then when uh, when I would get the e daily emails from Jackson, j like we all get the same one, and he was talking about doing the photo reading and so forth, what I did is I started to realize is that if I was doing evidence, what is the harm if I just go ahead and photo read the entire outline anyways if I'm doing evidence because it'll be something I've already done or I haven't, but I'm going to do it in the, next, in the next week. So yes, and that's, that's what I would do. Uh, but let's give him a hand. I congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you. And here, I'll, I'll do it. And here, I'll do it real fast. So, this just to give you all the motivation, because let me tell you something. When Andrew posted his stuff, uh, I, and I saw it with his family, I wasn't gonna let him get away with it. But, but I will share with you that there's nothing better when you get this. Looks like that. There you go. And, 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 and you and you get the oath. And you get the oath as an attorney. And, and then they, and of course, then they, then they really get you, you get to pay the big bucks to have it framed. <laughs> you can feel that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's our interview and podcast for today. I hope you enjoyed listening to James. Uh, again, it's a great story, as you can tell, and he's got lots more to say. Check out episode 195, where we do the full interview with him, uh, and I hope that uh, it's helpful to you. Now, if you're taking the exam in July 2018, good luck to you. We'll be back next week with more information as we get closer to that exam. If you're taking the exam in 2019, I encourage you to check out our webinar on Thursday, June 28th, How to Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. Be sure to register. You can do it here on the video page or by going to celebrationbarreview.com webinar. 
And we'll see forward to seeing you next week at the same time as we continue to move along the extra mile on the road to success for your bar exam. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Thanks for listening to the Extra Mile Podcast for Bar Exam Takers at www.celebrationbarreview.com.